In this session, let's discuss how to set up our first basic entity for our project as part of our application. So I have opened Visual Studio Code and this is our application, my app. And inside my app, we have this folder named API. Inside this folder, let's create a new folder here and name it as entities. And inside this entities folder, right click on this and select new C sharp class. On selecting that, it will open up a pop-up like this where we can enter the file name. So here you can provide the file name as app user. So this is our first entity which we are going to create, which is the user entity for our project and press enter. Now you can see app user.cs got created, this file name got created with the basic structure of it. So we are getting this basic structure because we have installed C sharp extensions as part of one of the video previously in this series, right? So because of the C sharp extension, which we had installed, we are getting this basic template over here as part of creating app user.cs. Now inside this app user class, let's create properties. Okay. Just type PR OP and press control space bar. On pressing this control space bar, you'll be able to see direct implementation options for this property. Okay. It's <clears throat> taking some time. See here you can see that the first option, if you are going to select this option, what will happen is automatically automatically this will implement the property so here you can see that this property with name my property got auto implemented over here right now here we can select what kind of property it is so you want to take integer for it then you can select here as integer you can retain this you can change this type as well according to your needs of this property okay now when creating properties when creating the first property, for example, I'm going to create ID property. Okay. It's very important to follow naming conventions as per EF that is entity framework. It's because if we give in the form of capital I and D, then what will happen is the entity framework will auto recognize that this is going to be the primary key of our database. We can even use the other naming conventions. No problem. But if you want this to support our entity framework, which we are going to provide in this series right, as part of this project and application, then it's always best to use this proper naming conventions with capital I and D so that our entity framework will auto recognize this and it is going to consider this as a primer key for our database. Okay. And similarly, along with this, let's create another property. Along with this ID, let's create another property with name as username. We'll select this. For username, instead of taking this as integer, since username is a string type, let's consider this as string. Just change this to <coughs> string or integer based on your needs. Okay, so I can consider this as an integer or I can consider this as a string. Okay. Now, one more thing which you need to think over here is while providing username, we have usual convention of personal use be used directly as username. So instead of using like this, it's always better to use with capital N for username. So what 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 help does this actually mean? So if you are using user with capital N username, then what will happen is in future, if you are using ASP Netcore identity in this project, 
and that uses this username as with capital M. So this will avoid refactoring of the code. And if you want to rename this again, that will be more tedious job, right? So it's better always we follow as per entity framework and as per ASP.NET Core identity so that it will help us in future when we are using those as part of our project. Okay. So we are using capital N for username over here. So these two properties we have provided as part of app user. Okay, this you can take anything. If you want for username, it's need not be like string only. You can take it as integer as well. It, uh, it, it actually leaves it to you like which data type you want to use for the properties which we are creating. Now, the next point which we need to understand over here is the access modifiers. If you see here, the properties, both of these properties, that is ID and username, we are using public as an access modifier. So what is the use of this public access modifier? This means that the property can be get or set from any other class in the application. See, for example, this property I am, I am, I am defining inside app user.cs, right? So this property can be accessed by using getter or setter from any other class in the application. That is the use of this public. Okay, and similarly, suppose I'm using instead of this public, I'm going to use protected. There's another access modifier with name as protected. What this protected access modifier means? It means that the property can be accessed in this class and in any other class that inherits from this class. See, for example, I'm going to provide this particular property with access modifier protector. Then what will happen is this property can be accessed within the same class that is app user.cs and any other class. For example, I am specifying any other class inside, inside this project, this folder, for example, that can be accessed by any other class that, in, that inherits this class. This class means where I have decided, where I have defined this property. Okay. If we are any inheriting, then we will be able to access this by making use of protected access modifier. Okay, then what else? We have another access modifier that is private. So if we are making use of private access modifier, then what will happen is this particular property that is ID property can be accessed only inside this class. And this can't, this property cannot be accessed outside of this class. Right? So highest privilege is for public, public property where you can access these properties anywhere. And next is protector where you can access inside this class and any other class which is inheriting this class. Okay, so that is protected. Then finally, the private access modifier, which means only inside this class, you'll be able to access these properties. So this is how we are setting up the first basic entity inside our project, my app. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Please like, comment, and share this video. And kindly subscribe to my channel in order to watch more videos. You can click on the bell icon so that you'll start receiving notifications when I'm, whenever I'm uploading a new video. Thank you.